Hey everyone, hope you're keeping well. Unfortunately, while I am nearly asymptomatic from COVID, the truth is I'm still not fully over it yet. And I also want to make sure that I have tested negative twice before interacting fully with Rachel again. So as a result, we're doing this from two separate parts of the apartment as we did with our restaurants video. Following on from that video about our favorite restaurants in the city though, we also wanted to take an opportunity to talk about some of our favorite pubs and bars as well. We are generally social drinkers and will enjoy alcohol when catching up with friends or enjoying a nice meal out. Because of this then, unless we're hosting people at our apartment, then we don't generally drink at home. Instead, heading out to bars and restaurants to do so. By way of drinking, I will drink most things within reason, but my drink of choice is usually a very nice beer, while Rachel is more partial to a cider, a nice glass of wine, or a lovely cocktail. Due to this, we often find that when we do go out to such places, we can always find something that is to our liking. Like with restaurants, there are a plethora of different places that one can go out to and enjoy a nice drink. We're not the biggest fan of loud, bars and clubs. So the aim with most of these is that you get to enjoy a good beverage in a quiet setting where you can still enjoy a conversation. With that, let's get started with the list. Death and Taxes is a little place on Queen Street West that has been a firm favorite of ours for a little while now. The drink selections include some Aperol spritzes and a pretty extensive wine list, as well as a really good rotation of craft beers. The atmosphere is very chilled, the interior is very minimalistic featuring a lot of wood, and there is a lovely patio outside that features a fire pit that you can sit at if there's enough room. As if it couldn't get any better, there's even a piano on the way to the bathroom, so if you get a hankering to play your own rendition of Chopsticks, you can do that too. Speaking of unique places to go, there is also Mugshot Tavern. This is a place that I discovered when I was living in the High Park area of the city, with the pub being just a stone's throw away from one of the park entrances. This is another small but mighty bar that has wall-to-ceiling mugshots of famous people, hence the name. In addition to all of the pictures that can keep you occupied for some time, as well as a wonderful selection of drinks to help keep the conversation flowing, and their brunch menu in particular is a genuine treat. While there is also a nice rooftop patio with views of High Park, such is the popularity of this place that you may struggle to get a table. So it's best to make sure that you arrive earlier should you wish to visit. The Drake is a hotel on Queen Street West and it has an amazing rooftop patio. While this does share a namesake with the famous rapper, this hotel was actually built in 1890 as the Smalls Hotel and changed its name to the Drake in 1949. While it does have hotel rooms, a restaurant, and an underground club that has hosted the likes of Billie Eilish before, as I mentioned, our favorite part is the rooftop patio. It's a great place for a nice cocktail, especially during their happy hour when you can get them and pints for a little bit cheaper. My personal favorite is their margarita. Sometimes they even offer a spicy margarita. In the height of what is normally a sweltering summer, the shade that this can provide is the perfect antidote. One of the greatest things from a beer drinker's perspective is the rise of the craft beer scene here in North America. If you needed any evidence of this, it is worth noting that there are about 20 plus different independent breweries in the city of Toronto alone, each of which bring their own unique identities and flavor profiles. Due to a desire to discover as many of these breweries as possible, that is something that brought me to Bandit Brewery, and it was love at first sip. Since that first visit, every single time I've been able to go since, I have always been able to find a beer on their menu that I have enjoyed, even if it's not generally the type of beer I would normally go for. The beer garden that they have at their brewery is also very charming, and in addition, their food menu is second to none. 
One of the unique things about Bandit though is that you can only get their beer on site. It is not available in any liquor stores, even if they're local ones. Therefore, if you're going to pick a brewery to visit while you're here, then make sure that Bandit is at least on your shortlist. The other one that I would put on the shortlist is Indy Ale House in The Junction. This is another place that I personally have enjoyed on a couple of occasions, and is another one that does high quality beers, and particularly pay attention to their darks, their ales, their porters, and their stouts. The thing that sets this apart from the others though is the quality of their food. Amongst the other pub fare, they make phenomenal burgers and pizzas, making this the perfect place for that ideal pizza and beer combination should you be that way inclined. The last of the unique places that I'm going to mention today is Birreria Volo. Excuse the Italian accent. This bar is so narrow and so very well hidden in the street that you may end up missing it if you're not specifically looking for it. However, should you find it, then you are in for a treat. While this place does do its own proprietary brews, the thing that makes this bar particularly unique is that they have 26 rotating taps, each representing different letters of the alphabet. The one time that I have been there, not only did they have a good selection, but that selection ended up rotating midway through the evening, which then added even more variety for us to sample. Pair that with menu options that come in conjunction with one of the best fried chicken places in the city called PG Clux, and you have yourself a brilliant evening. Should you be more of a cider person like me, then you're in luck. Brickwork Cider Works is one of the more prominent names in the Ontario cider business, and their Toronto location is located on Queen Street East. In addition to their main menu, which includes some of their core cider flavors, as well as cider-based cocktails, they have an even deeper rotating menu of ciders to keep the variety going. With that, if you're gonna pick cider as your weapon of choice for the evening, let this be the place you go. Back to cocktails. If you wanna to go to a place that is both unique in its offerings as well as its location, then the Spirit of York Distillery is the place for you. This is aptly located in the historic distillery district of the city. And while this is not the distillery that this particular area is known for, it is definitely one you should take notice of. Spirit of York sells its own gin, vodka, whiskey, and aquavit in bottle form. To help showcase them, they allow you to do tasting flights of each of them. They also have an incredible menu of cocktails. You could sit there with your friends and family and drink while having a lovely conversation, trying a variety of these for hours on end. The Spirit of York is decorated absolutely beautifully. It features glass bottles, greenery, as well as some barrels and some leather couches. It also has information boards detailing how they make their spirits, as well as some board games that you can play with your friends and family if you want to nerd out. I highly recommend this place and hope that you get a chance to visit. Now, we know that we said that we were only going to be talking about quieter locations, but this one really deserves a mention, and if you time it right, it can still be a quiet place for a good drink. Pizza Wine Disco on Queen West is an unassuming bar under Studio Legree by day, but by night it is a packed but happening bar that also offers bottle service. However, do not let that put you off, as all this shows is that it is popular, and rightfully so. As the name implies, this is a great place for both pizza and wine, but the thing that sets this place apart is the quality of their cocktails. Their espresso martini made with Nutella syrup is quite possibly one of the best that we've ever had, and that alone should be a good enough reason for you to give it a visit. Last, but by no means least, we have Hemingway's. It is located in Yorkville, which is a short walk away from the University of Toronto campus, as well as the Royal Ontario Museum, and has definitely been a mainstay in life in Toronto for us. This is a New Zealand themed pub, and it has seating on multiple levels, including a covered rooftop patio, which is amazing in both the summer, as well as the winter when they do have heaters. 
Nick is a Brit who, along with his expat friend group, enjoy rugby. He has introduced me to this game and Hemingways is known for being one of the bars where you can go and catch practically any rugby game. Come Six Nations, Rugby Championships, and World Cup, you will find this place absolutely swarming with rugby fans of all nationalities. Alongside that, they also have open mic nights, which Nick has performed at, trivia nights, and headphone disc. So this has a little something to offer everyone. I've been accompanying Nick and his friends to watch the rugby at Hemingways on the weekend for the past year and a half, two years now. And it's a really great spot where we can all get together, watch the rugby while we enjoy bottomless coffee, a really great pub style brunch. They have a really good menu that has eggs benedict, also a traditional English fry up. And they also have a few deals on cocktails, including half priced mimosas, as well as I'm never sure which it is, Bloody Mary's or Caesar's. So this is a place that we definitely recommend you check out. And those are our top picks on places you check out for good drinks in the city. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video and make sure that you subscribe to our channel. Until next time. Take care. And keep smiling. While it does have hotel rooms, a restaurant, and an under... Mm -hmm. Pair that with menu options that come in conjunction with one of the best fried chicken places in the city called PJ Inn. Spirit of York sells its own gin, whiskey, aquavit, this bar is known for hosting. Mm -hmm.